Knives, Sports, and Adventures here. So today I'm doing a video that someone requested. Someone requested that I actually do a full review of my Badger Blades Katana. Uh, so this is the Katana. Uh, as you can see, it is not a traditional Japanese handle construction. Um, the Suba here is um, steel. It is welded. It is not sitting freely on there. Um, it is a cord wrapped handle. Uh, I'm going to show you, this is my Badger Blade Saber. So this is what the handle construction is actually like. Um, so on the inside you have these wooden scales, okay, over top of the tang. They are held in place with electrical tape wrapped around it like this. Uh, and then the cord is wrapped around it like this. And this is kind of a, a nylon type cord. So this is not a traditional handle construction, and it is the same for all their swords, unless you request something different. Um, not traditional, but it is very sturdy. Now I want to show you the welding in the construction here. Normally, this would be a no-no, okay? So normally you wouldn't weld a, a guard or a pommel to a tang. Uh, unless you are going to do it properly by welding and then heat treating this entire sword as a unit. So if you if you weld this on after you heat treated it, you create possibly soft, possibly hard, but definitely weak points um, at the junction of the tang and the blade right where it is the most vulnerable. Badger Blaze does not do that. Their, their construction is extremely durable. Okay, so this is this is all welded and then heat treated. Um, and it is it is extremely durable. Uh, and their warranty covers that. Just I mean, just look at their website. They they basically, as long as you're legitimately trying to chop something with this sword and not actually trying to break it or do something, doing something stupid like freezing it with liquid nitrogen. The warranty covers everything. They consider chopping through wood and plate armor and anything else uh, to be within the normal use of their swords. And I have no reason to doubt that. I mean, that, that is the one thing about this. You can see this is not a polished blade. This is not a beautiful, pretty wall hanger. This is designed to be used and they expect you to use them. Um, so when we're talking about blade edge blade steel. Um, this is an incredibly durable steel. Um, I've got some other videos about, you know, where I'm chopping and I'm splitting logs and I'm chopping through water bottles and ropes. And, um, you know, I've, I've chopped kindling with this sword. I chop it into the ground. I'm not particularly avoiding any rocks or anything that might be in the ground. Um, and you can see, I mean, there are zero chips, zero rolls, zero damage to this edge. Um, I have sharpened this since I've owned it, um, but I mean, it's just been an incredibly durable edge. There's no no bending in this edge, no bending in the no warping in the blade. Um, despite the abuse that I have put it through, this is nothing but, you know, right tight construction and it's it's not damaged at all. I have no reason to doubt their warranty. I love, love, love this sword. Uh, one really cool thing about this, I don't know if I'll be able to duplicate it. Ah, you can, you can hear it. You can hear when I hit that sword and it does this when you chop something hard. Um, it just has this ring to it, which means that everything is very tight and you know, compact and not loose at all. Um, the handle here on the cord wrap is very grippy uh, for a two-handed grip. I like it a lot. It's kind of got a hexagonal construction to it um, with the wide flats here so that it um, it's indexes the blade really well. You can tell exactly where the edge is when you're swinging it. Um, so overall, I really like this. It has a good weighted pommel on it, which a lot of katanas do not. Um, the balance point is right here, you know, about, about two inches in front of the two and a half inches in front of the guard, uh, which is right where you want it for uh, a two-handed sword. It's a bit heavy, you know, to swing it one-handed. Um, it is a perfect balance for two-handed swinging. 
Um, you know, I, I kind of get right on, on the pommel there so I can feel right when I'm going to come off of the edge. Excellent, excellent sword. Um, you know, it's, it's a very high carbon steel that's in the blade, so it is prone to rust. Definitely use their Choji, uh, which they make the best that I've ever used uh, to keep it from rusting. You know, construction details like this, this bottom edge here of the guard is not as sharp as the top edge. They have gone to some effort to round that. Uh, I would probably do a little bit more if I were constructing it. But, you know, they've made it large enough that it doesn't contact your hand, and I've never actually had any problems with that using it. On the saber here, um, you can see I did grind this a little bit carefully so as not to heat it up and, and remove the heat treat. Um, and they, they told me that was okay as long as I was careful not to heat it up. They're a lot less picky about, you know, warranty issues than a lot of other, other companies, which is great. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, it's survived a lot of abuse from me. Nothing voids the warranty. Exceptional, exceptional um, user sword, uh, and I, I highly recommend it. Uh, so, yeah, really, really nothing bad to say about these. I mean, there's no sharp edges, nothing dangerous about this. The grip on this one I am going to redo with leather, which they told me was okay as long as I use uh, a leather that's, that's vegetable tanned. Uh, I'm going to wrap this in leather instead of cord. Um, but yeah, it was a little too hard on the hands with the cord wrap on a single-handed sword. But the grippiness of it is, is perfect for a double-handed sword like the katana.